Is there a gay gene? This is Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek, and today I'm going to do one of the most controversial videos I've ever done concerning genetics and sexual orientation. Years ago, I worked in the computer field, and I was working on the night shift with a co-worker. He always seemed effeminate to me, but of course, I didn't want to bring up the subject of sexual preference, partly out of politeness and partly out of an awareness of the company's policy on sexual harassment and creating a hostile work environment. Anyway, on the night shift, there's a lot of downtime in the data center. And naturally, you get into some discussions. Sometimes we talk about movies or music or travel. Sometimes we just talk shop. Sometimes we talk about religion. He was an atheist, so usually those conversations didn't last that long. But more often than not, we talked about politics. He was a liberal, and that was more of a conservative. On several occasions, he brought up his belief that there was a gay gene. This was about 20 years ago, when there was a lot of talk about the discovery of a gay gene. You see, in 1991, a British neurobiologist at the Salk Institute in La Jolla, California, named Simon LeVay, reported finding a difference between the brains of heterosexuals and the brains of homosexuals in his research. A lot of people took this to mean that there was a biological cause for homosexuality. It turned out that subsequent research wasn't able to duplicate his findings, and his methods came into question. Also in 1991, the Bailey Pillard study on twins and homosexuality concluded that 52% of the cases of identical twins and 22% of the cases of fraternal twins, where one was gay, had both twins gay. This suggested a genetic link to homosexuality, since identical twins are genetically the same. A subsequent study by Behrman and Bruckner with a larger sampling, concluded that the numbers were more like 7.7% and 5.3%, which is statistically insignificant, especially when you consider the fact that twins tend to be raised in the same environment. In 1993, molecular geneticist Dean Hamer and his colleagues announced that they had found a genetic link to male homosexuality, but the Office of Research Integrity ended up investigating charges by a member of Hamer's team that he selectively reported his data in ways that boosted the study's conclusions. A few years later, a different research team concluded that the results suggest that if there is a linkage, it's so weak that it's not important, and that researchers should be looking elsewhere for the genes that contribute to homosexuality. Well, Dean Hamer disputed their findings, and over the next 20 years, more research was done with conflicting results. Then, in August of 2019, the largest study ever conducted on the matter, including nearly half a million people, concluded that there is no gay gene. Science Magazine stated that this closes the door on the debate around the existence of a so-called gay gene. The study shows that genes play a small and limited role in determining sexuality. Genetic heritability all of the information stored in our genes and passed between generations can only explain 8 to 25% of why people have same-sex relations, based on the study's results. Now, maybe that 8 to 25% can be attributed to epigenetics, the study of the impact of the environment on genes. Here's how this was reported on CBS. A new study found there is no single gene that can determine a person's sexual orientation. The Science Journal published what is being considered the largest genetic study on sexual behavior. The research concluded that a person's sexual orientation is shaped by a mix of genetics and environmental factors. This new research concludes there is no specific gay gene. So what is your biggest takeaway from that? I think the biggest takeaway of the study is that, you know, for, for a long time it was, it was thought that perhaps there was a single gay gene that could be turned on or off, which meant that sexual orientation was something that was, um, that was the result of a single genetic trait. But what we know uh, is that it is incredibly complicated uh, and that there are many, many genetic traits that, that, that contribute to sexual orientation. But the science is really clear that it is genetic. The scientific community has known since 1999 that Dean Hamer's study was probably flawed, so they set out to prove that sexual preference is determined in the brain. Some people's brains just turn out different, and they end up gay, you see. 
But the problem is, the brain is also impacted by environmental forces. So you still end up with the chicken or the egg, nature versus nurture, question mark. Are those differences causative or symptomatic? In other words, does the brain influence the behavior or does the behavior influence the brain? Proponents of the gay agenda want to prove that homosexuals are born that way in order to make their cause a constitutional issue like civil rights was for black people. Well, maybe we should get the opinion of somebody who has actually studied the brain. Say, somebody like the famous neurosurgeon, Dr. Ben Carson, who also happens to be black. People have no control over their race, for instance. You think they have control over their sexuality? Absolutely. So there you go. And by the way, that co-worker I told you about who believed that there was a gay gene, turns out he was gay. And Zeke Stokes, the guy in the CBS clip, he's with GLAAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. Also gay. And Simon LeVay, he's gay too. In fact, he was on record saying that finding a genetic cause for homosexuality would go a long way in promoting gay rights. And his research was partly in response to the loss of his gay lover to AIDS a year earlier. Oh, and Dean Hamer, the geneticist who reportedly discovered the gay gene? You guessed it, gay. Here he is with his husband. Dr. Nicholas Cummings, the former president of the American Psychological Association, says that the gay agenda took over the APA in the 1980s, and politics began running their research rather than actual science. In that era, the Leona Tyler principle was paramount, that the APA would never take a position publicly that wasn't supported by scientific evidence, that it had to be scientifically demonstrated. And we abided, uh, the presidents in my era, abided by the Leona Tyler principle. All of a sudden, things began to change as things became more political than scientific. The Leona Tyler principle, which was never withdrawn, disappeared. Ever since the Age of Enlightenment began 300 years ago, the world of science has been trying to discredit the Bible and Christianity. They said that the universe had no beginning, but they discovered about 100 years ago that they were wrong. The universe did have a beginning, just like the Bible says. The Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in 1947, disproving many views held by the critics of the Bible. And in the 21st century, our understanding of the complexity of DNA and molecular machines and the information processing environment within the cell have caused many scientists to abandon their previously held views on evolution. And now we have this report that concludes that there is no gay gene. It looks like maybe human behavior is as relevant as any other factor when it comes to human sexuality, which is consistent with what the Bible says. Whether we're talking about homosexuality, fornication, lying, stealing, murder, drunkenness, gossip, backbiting, or just plain old self-righteousness, it's all sin. And the Bible says that the soul that sins will surely die. The good news is that Jesus came and paid the price for our sins. And by trusting in him for the forgiveness of sin, we can receive eternal life. Thank God for his mercy. And thank you for watching.